What's up everybody? Welcome back or to the channel. So today we're going to be doing an unboxing, general demonstration, and initial review. And what that product is, is a portable abrasive blaster. Now I have been looking at a couple different abrasive blaster tanks. Uh, there's so many out on the market to choose from. I typically like to go to Harbor Freight because they usually have pretty good products at very low prices. So I stopped into Harbor Freight the other day and was looking around. They have a couple big tanks, a couple mid-sized tanks, and some portable abrasive blasters. Now let me first explain what type of uses I specifically will be using this abrasive blaster for. I'm not restoring full cars where I need an abrasive blaster to literally blast paint and rust and powder coat off of large panels and very large products. That's not what I'm doing. If that's primarily what you're doing, you're probably not looking for a small portable abrasive blaster. You need something a lot bigger and more powerful. But when you're looking at abrasive blasters that are bigger and more powerful, you're probably going to need a bigger, more powerful air compressor to handle that abrasive blaster. And all that adds up money. So if that's something you're looking for, fantastic. But that's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking to be doing is blasting paint and powder coat off of mostly smaller parts. Nothing huge, maybe some suspension coils, maybe some lift kit brackets, end links, little name plates, exhaust tips, general stuff like that. That's what I'm looking for. And I'm not doing it all the time on a regular basis, so I don't want to invest in anything large or cumbersome or anything that's going to require me to spend even more money on a bigger air compressor than I already have just to run it on a case by case basis. So that brings us to what I picked up. What I picked up from Harbor Freight is a central pneumatic 50 pound portable abrasive blaster. It's very inexpensive. It typically runs anywhere between 30 and $40 depending on if you get it on sale or if you get it with a coupon or not, but it's very inexpensive. It has typically a lot of good reviews on what it's being used for, but without further ado, let's just jump in and check this thing out and see if it's worth it. Okay, so here we go here. This is what I was referring to, the Central Pneumatic Portable Abrasive Blaster. It has a 50 pound drum here that holds all of your media. It does come with your gun. It just has a basic open cavity here that you pour your media down in. You have your hose that the media comes up into the gun, and then you hook your air compressor to the bottom right there. It's a very basic, simple abrasive blaster, and you don't need a big air compressor to run it. So as you can see right here, minimum air requirements are 3.5 CFM at 50 PSI. So again, if you just have a smaller pancake style air compressor, or you have something a little larger like this, any of those will probably work this abrasive blaster perfectly fine. It's only when you start getting into the much bigger compression tank style abrasive kits that are going to require a much higher CFM, like say 7 to 12 at say 60 or 90 PSI. My air compressor is just not strong enough to handle something that big and that consistent when it comes to that much airflow that's going to be needed. But for my use on what I plan on actually blasting, this should work perfectly fine for my intentions. I also went ahead and picked up one of these water slash condensation separators, which just goes in line to your gun that should help separate any moisture that might accumulate while using this. The media typically needs to be extremely dry so that it can flow through the hose and be sucked up by a vacuum using the air supplied to blast it out of its gun. So that's why I got this and these are very inexpensive, maybe like seven bucks. But I do recommend getting one of these because it probably will help you when you're using this a little bit more often. Now, as far as the media, I just stopped by my local tractor supply and grabbed some red bag, black diamond. It's a cool slag media, which I really like using this stuff because again, it's extremely inexpensive. You could always go to Harbor Freight or any of these other stores that sell the media and get some aluminum oxide or maybe some crushed walnut or maybe some of that soda blast. All that stuff gets really expensive. Just as a comparable, a 25 pound bucket of aluminum oxide, which you could typically get at Harbor Freight, will probably run you over $40 for 25 pounds. This is $9.99 for a 50 pound bag. So you can't beat it, it works just as good as the aluminum oxide, at least in my experience. So that's what I got there. 
So this should be very simple. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put it together. I'll set some horses up out over here and I'll just get some basic stuff like this to show you. Let's see if I can grab this stuff here. Even stuff like this, which are just basically painted nameplates that I've had custom cut out over the years. So I could go ahead and sandblast these down and then have them refinished or repowder coated. So as you can see here, this one here is getting a lot of surface rust. So again, I could go ahead and clean a lot of that stuff up, no problem at all. Because again, my goal is to start doing some more powder coating projects on the side just for fun. And that's why I have my oven here and my powder coat gun over here. Okay, that's what that's for there. Okay, but over here, I'll show you my truck and you'll see I'll start getting some surface rust right over here. Okay, a lot of this stuff was just painted at one point a long time ago, but the surface is actually starting to come off. So it's starting to look pretty shabby here. So all I gotta do is get under here with a media blaster, blast all that off, go back under with like a black Rust-Oleum type paint, spray paint it and be good to go. Same thing over here. A lot of this was all powder coated, but the bolts start to look pretty shabby. So I'll go under here, blast all that, clean it up, and then we'll go ahead and touch that up with some black spray paint as well. So again, if you're just trying to do some general maintenance underneath your vehicle, where you might have some rust, okay? You know, rusty parts like that, on some of your brackets and such, when your vehicles are parked outside, depending on what the weather is like where you live, you gotta understand that a lot of that stuff is gonna start to show its age over time. So cleaning it up every once in a while, as far as like a maintenance thing, it's going to help. So all you gotta do, sandblast it down and then touch it up with some type of paint like this. Okay, something like a Rust-Oleum, two times coverage, paint and primer, automotive grade. Gloss black, this right here will help protect it, make it look real nice, and you'll be good to go. So let me go ahead and get this unboxed, and we'll start putting it together. I'll be right back in a second. Okay, so we got it out of the box. So this is pretty much how it's gonna come right out of the box. I wish they would actually not connect the hose and just leave it wound up, because when they stick it in the box for shipping and storage, your hose ends up getting kinked, and I've seen a lot of people complain about that. But again, not a big deal. If that kink doesn't come out, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that hose off and then pull it over and reattach it to the uh, nipple right here. So we should be good to go there. On the other side, the hose is just left over hanging, which I wish they would have done that on this side as well, but not a big deal. Reach inside. Okay, here's our blasting gun there. And then we have some general information on your manual. Now, if we look inside, you can see there's nothing really going on in there. It's pretty basic, just a big plastic drum down at the very bottom there. I don't know if you can see it with the light. That's where your outlet comes in, that your media comes out of this nozzle right here. And this other side here, you're just plugging that onto the bottom of this gun here, unless you happen to have one of these. If you get yourself an inline water separator, you can go ahead and put some thread tape right here thread that right on the top. Then you can go ahead and hook up your air compressor to that hose there. But this hose right here is just gonna connect to this pipe right here where my finger is. This right here is gonna connect here. So let me go ahead and get that put together and we'll be right back. Okay, so here we go. So I went ahead and I got my hose plugged back onto the bottom here and I have the end of the hose just kind of sitting here laying. I did end up cutting the first few inches of the hose off because it was kinked and shipping in the box. So I would probably recommend doing that because you don't wanna have any kinks in your hose when it comes to your media because that's gonna plug up your media. So I went ahead and cut that off with just a basic razor blade and now the end of the hose here is nice and flush and there's no kinks in the hose. So that's pretty much sitting here ready to go. Over here, I went ahead and I hooked up my uh, water separator here. I just used some thread tape screwed this onto the bottom nipple of the gun, which was already included. Then I went ahead and took an extra fitting that I had to laid around, used some thread tape and screwed that onto the bottom of the water separator because that's what's gonna hook up to my hose over here for the quick disconnect. So I have that and I went ahead and took the nozzle off. It does come with an Allen key. All you gotta do is loosen those two bolts and this whole head can come off. You do have a ceramic tip here. This is probably a little larger for some of your heavier coarse media, but you can buy other ceramic tips that will handle smaller, more finer media. So if you're using say a soda blast, you're probably gonna want more of a thinner diameter nozzle, but this one will work for fine. So I just wanted to show you, all you have to do is loosen these two Allen bolts here. Your tip can pop right out. This can pop right off. 
To put it back on, you take this, slide it back on over here, tighten down the back bolt that attaches it to the gun, go ahead and slide your nozzle into the front, tighten down that, but don't tighten it down too, too tight. You don't wanna manhandle it because that front bolt is what's holding your nozzle in place. Once you do that, we should be ready to go. I'll go ahead and pour some of the media into the bucket. Again, I'm not gonna do a ton. I'm just gonna put maybe uh, five pounds or so. We're gonna put it in there. And we're gonna go out here and we're just gonna try to blast some of that paint. Now, I also recommend when you do start using this, using some type of hood over your head to protect your face from any kind of ricochet of media, or even better, use some type of chemical respirator mask like this, which is what I typically use when I'm painting or powder coating or something like that. These work a lot better in some type of protective eyewear. So again, you could use the whole hood cover that covers your entire head and your face, or you could use some type of respirator and goggles. Either way, you wanna make sure you're protecting yourself because you don't wanna be breathing in any of this type of media. So let me go ahead and get this hooked up to the air compressor over here. My air compressor is filled up. I have it at about 200 PSI over here, but I did regulate it on the way out at 60 PSI. So this does recommend a minimum of 50 PSI right here at 3.5 CFM with a max air pressure of 120. So again, I'm gonna start it out at 60 PSI and we're gonna see how that does. If I need to crank it up a little bit more or turn it down a little bit less, I can do that right here on my air compressor. So let me go ahead and set the camera up. Let me get the air compressor line hooked up to the abrasive blaster. And we're gonna go ahead and test this out and see if this very inexpensive portable abrasive blaster is gonna work or is it gonna be a waste of money? Okay, so here we go. We have my respirator on and my eye protection. We're all hooked up to air. Let's go ahead and test out this abrasive blaster and see if it's worth it. Okay, and also I forgot to mention, definitely make sure you're wearing good hand protection as well. Okay, so we just got done blasting one side and it actually went really good. Let's take a closer look. So this is how it came out here. Okay, I could probably take a little bit more time and clean it off a little bit, but this is what it did look like, okay? So this was already painted once before. This is the back side, all right? This is the side I just went ahead and blasted with this media blaster. So again, I could do a little bit better of a job, but again, this was just a quick demonstration. But as you can see, it only took me maybe a minute or so to get all that cleared off. So again, the nozzle that actually comes on this is actually pretty good. The media that I was using is just very cheap coal-based media that you could get at like your local tractor supply. The moisture separator worked pretty good. Everything worked good. The hose that actually comes with this is actually pretty long. 
Again, I actually only had the drum here maybe five feet or so away from where I was working, and I still had plenty of hose. You might even wanna consider cutting that hose a little shorter so that you don't have that much of a long hose for the media to have to travel through to come out to the tip. So let me do this. Let me go over, get my truck, and I'm gonna back it up over here, and I'm gonna go ahead and try to blast some of those parts underneath and see how that works. So let's test that out. Okay, so I just shut everything down. Let's take a closer look. As you can see, I still have a little bit more to do. It does do a pretty good job at taking off some of that old paint and basic surface rust that might accumulate on some of these parts. But that's basically what I was looking for was something that'll take some of the chipping paint and surface rust off of parts like that and blast it off so it's nice and clear down to the metal. And then I could go back over it with a nice Rust-Oleum paint protection and that way it'll protect the underneath of my truck for even longer. So, so far, it's doing really good. Okay, everybody, so we just finished up on our testing, and so far, my initial impressions of the Central Pneumatic 50-pound portable abrasive blaster, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a thumbs up, I give it a go. For what it is, it's a very low-cost portable abrasive blaster. It can't get any more basic than that. It worked when I was blasting off some of the old paint from little metal nameplate brackets that I had. It worked perfectly good with that. It worked perfectly fine when I went under my truck to blast off some of the surface rust from the bottom of the frame. It worked pretty good for that. Now again, this isn't the biggest nozzle. This is not meant for giant projects. But for your smaller projects or your small hard to reach areas of a bigger project this is definitely something you should keep around even if you're doing auto restoration there might be little crevices where a typical grinding wheel or a sanding wheel or a sanding disc just won't get to so if you need those little tight small creviced areas that no other tool can get to this particular abrasive blaster will get to those small spots very easily so again so far i'm really happy with it I think it's going to work fine for the basic projects that I plan on using it for. Again, I don't plan on using it that often. That's why I wanted it to be small and portable. That way I can set it out of the way and when I need to use it, I can pull it back out and use it. The only thing I would recommend doing is cutting your hose a little shorter because the supplied hose it comes with is very long. I'd say cut it down maybe half the size or whatever length you want to do it at and that will help pull the media from the drum to your gun a little faster and more consistent. And then I would probably say every once in a while, check on the media or just shake the drum around just to kind of mix it up a little bit. And that tends to make sure it's keeping a steady flow too, because all that media is just basically sitting down at the bottom. It's not really being pushed out like you would find on an abrasive blaster with a pressurized tank. It's actually being sucked out the bottom from the pressure that's creating the vacuum from your air compressor. So sometimes that, that media will just kind of sit down at the bottom and just give the barrel a little shake and it'll loosen up and you'll be fine. So overall, I really like it. I think it's going to work great. For a little over $30, I'm really happy with this purchase. It's very basic. There's not much to go wrong. There's not much to break. It's a very simple tool, but it does work really well. So if this happens to be what you're looking for, an inexpensive, portable, abrasive blaster, I definitely give it a thumbs up. I give it a go. So there you go, guys. That's it for today's video. I hope this video helps some of you out. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button and like this video. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And also do me a favor, subscribe to the channel because it definitely helps me out and I greatly appreciate it. So that's it. I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you. I truly appreciate you all. Thank you. And as always, see you in the next video.